excited about this uh, session. We have Heather's royalty with us. Um, this person has been a real cheerleader of our show from the beginning, uh, has seen the show probably about 50 times, uh, but more importantly, was involved in the original Heather's film. Uh, and we were just backstage and I said, oh my God, I can't wait to hear the stories about how the film came about and how it is now to watch the character of Heather McNamara musicalized. Um, please give the warmest of welcomes for Lizanne Fox. Backstage, it was nearly 35 years ago. That, I'm not rubbing it. That, that might be my age. Uh, 35 years ago, the film came out. How wild is that that we are now sat here on the set of the musical after it's running for five years here? It's awesome. It's mad, isn't it? <laughs> it's, um, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, we made this small film, and the budget was under a million dollars. Wow. And we shot it in 30 days and everybody was under 30, pretty much, that was involved in the production, yeah. and we just were making this kind of dark, fun film that we figured, you know, if a few people watched, that would make us happy, so... 30 days? 30, 30 years, 30 days, yeah. Wow. <laughs> and so just talk to me about that process at the beginning, when you, you auditioned, right? Yes, so um, Monona and Christian were cast right. at the point, and they were casting for the... Heathers. Oh. So my first audition, I had sides, which are just the scene that the character was in, and it was for Heather Chandler. So everybody was reading for Heather Chandler. I didn't know this. <laughs> really? No. Really? Yes, yeah, yeah. so I was reading for Heather Chandler. Oh, I should have bought this. I had the sides in my little memory book. Oh. And so I looked at this, and two things. I was just like, oh, that's not really me. Yeah. But I'm going to bring on my best, you know mythic bitch <laughs> and go in there and give it a shot so i i went in and i read the sides for um daniel waters the writers there um michael layman the director and denise Jody, the producer and i thought i did a good job but you know inside i kept feeling i'm always really good at casting other people in parts but i would i would cast this person or i would cast that person so um i left and then i got a call back and i was all excited and they call me back to read for Heather McNamara. Right. So this I could wrap my, my head around. And did they I, tell you the qualities of the character at this point? Um, it was kind of a one, you know, Heather Chandler was the leader of the Heather. It was very one-liner, right. one-liner, because yes. we didn't see scripts. Okay. And when I got to go back for Heather McNamara, I did get a script. And then it all kind of went like, whoa, my loan. This movie's crazy. <laughs> and did um, you think it was crazy? I thought it was totally crazy. I mean, everything I generally auditioned for were after school specials, which were like pregnant teen and, you know, what are the parents going to do? Should I keep it? Will he marry me? Or, you know, yeah. kind of, uh, John Hughes movies, which were great, but were more like, is, am I going to get See, a date to the call? I John Hughes movies. You're all too <laughs> long. <laughs> so, John Hughes, you must go home and watch. So, yes, home Breakfast home. Club. Breakfast Club. Oh. <laughs> Okay. So, do you know there is a movie of Heather's? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, just checking. Before we go any further, just yeah. we need to get it out there straight away. What was the known writer like? <laughs> <laughs> You're amongst friends. Uh, now we want dirt, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Winona was delightful. She's 16. Just, she was just like her character. I mean, she created Veronica not far from who she was as a person, I right. think. And, um, she was great. We became really good friends over the shoot, and right. I loved working with her, and, and we had a great time on the on the film. And, Amazing. And a good Amazing. friendship. Yeah. Do you know the Brad Pitt story? Yes, I do. Now, I've just given away <laughs> one of the questions for the quiz later on, oh. but just just give me this nugget of information. So Brad Pitt was offered JD. Yeah, I didn't know this until we went on the 30th anniversary tour and heard the story yeah. from Dan and Michael. So no, he, he came when they first wrote the script, before they, they go around to see if people are interested in making it, they do a, a table read. Yeah. And they ask friends who are actors to come in and read the parts to see if things are working or not working. So 
somebody who's friendly with Brad, he was not, this was pre Brad Pitt. At Brad Pitt. Yeah. <laughs> and he came in and read the JD part. And when he was done afterwards, he went up to uh, Michael and Dad said, hey man, I'm this, I can do Brad Pitt invitation. <laughs> Dad does a good one. <laughs> And, you know, I love this part, and like, you know, if, if you'd consider me for it, I, you know, I love it and whatever, but he just wasn't at yeah. that point anybody, so. Wow. But yeah. Wow. And so I, sorry, interrupted you, you went back in yeah. to Heather McNamara. Yes. So I went into Heather McNamara and basically was like, I'm going to, I want this part more than anything. And I got home and sat by the phone and waited and waited. And they called up, my agent called and said, they loved you. And then they said, but they have someone who has slightly more credits than you, and they're going to give them the part of Heather McNamara. And I went and said, oh, <laughs> cry. But then they said, but would you be open to doing another role in the movie? Because they want you to be in the movie because they love you. And there's a role called Country Club Courtney. <laughs> and whatever, sure, I'll be in the movie. And she I'm didn't like, make yeah. the movie. <laughs> Oh, really? That's Country Club it... Courtney is preppy. Oh, I see. Yes. With okay. the, you know, the Lacoste or uh, yeah. Ralph Lauren shirt and like Amazing. this jumper. Yeah. Uh, the lingo, I think. So I was like, you know what? I just want to be in this movie. I want to work with these people. Every job is an opportunity. I'm in. Three days later, the girl they wanted dropped out when you had a McNamara. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest see? is history. So it pays to just, The world has know. a weird way of working itself out. Yeah. Where, where did she go? Um, think, do we know? Yeah. The one that was originally playing... The, 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 one, the one that was originally playing Heather McNamara. Okay, well, uh, Heather McNamara... I, I think, it always gets clouded. We all have different versions of what we heard. Um, imagine that. But there was an actress named Danielle Van Zernak. Right. And I believe she's married to one of the Pogues. I don't okay. know. But she got some TV job okay, or something. Fine. But the better story that everybody loves is there's an actress, Heather Graham. Do you right. know who she is? No. Yeah. Oh, I like this. She was in the Austin. This is just the, yeah, Austin Powers. Oh, okay. Boogie Nights. And yeah. She was a, quite a big um, drugstore cowboy. Okay. Um, she was quite a big in a, a lot of teen movies. And they wanted, they really wanted her for Heather Chandler. Yeah. She was doing perfect. And her parents wouldn't let her do it because she was okay. 16. And um, so she dropped out, and then Kim Walker, who got cast as Heather Shannon, came in for the role because she was dating Christian Slater. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, but she was good. Yeah, she was very good. So you're on set, and was there a moment where you just go, this film is absolutely bonkers? Is there that moment, or do you just do what is on the page, and you're being directed, and you get on with it? Or was there a moment where you thought, 35 years later, I'm going to be sat on the stage talking about <laughs> the coldness of this this story. Okay, no, I didn't get it. In 30, in 35 years from then, I was like, I'd be some old person in a wheelchair. <laughs> 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 so I, I don't think any of us, I, I think there was just an air and present and going, we all felt this excitement in the air. It was moving, everything was moving really quick, mm. so it wasn't time to have tons of fun, like, um, hanging out stuff because they were just moving through the scenes but there was definitely an energy and every time when we were doing lines we would be cracking up and going yeah. oh my god this is too much and we yeah. have to straighten up and you know re-deliver so i mean i think we all felt the energy but the truth is which i don't know you probably know this the movie came out we shot in 1988 it came out in march of 1989 and the company that was distributing it went bust and they didn't put any money into the promotion of it so it was in the theaters for about a week and then it just kind of went it got decent reviews and some people loved it other people were horrified oh my god what are you thinking yeah. you know how can they make a movie like this um and basically what happened it's a slow burn. So in the 90s, there was a thing called a VHS, and you watched it. That's a tape player, everyone. <laughs> this really is like a history lesson. Um, Tapes. <laughs> Tapes. Uh, so at the video stores, the people who worked there, the video clerks, um, there's a movie about that. I really good. <laughs> I actually remember, was it D? D Blockbuster. Blockbuster. That was it. Blockbuster. It was taken over by Netflix. Really? And then we know that story. Yeah. So Blockbuster Video, which was huge, the, the people who worked in the shops would put little tags on their favorite films. 
And somehow, through word of mouth, people started mm. seeing the movie, and it became this kind of VHS. It's so interesting um, because the musical theatre geek in me, I, I look at um, titles of films, right. and sometimes the more subversive titles, such as Heathers, um, I'll use a few more examples. Kinky Boots wasn't <laughs> yeah, yeah. necessarily a yeah, massive, yeah. massive film. Yeah. Billy Elliot wasn't massive. Um, those are the ones that actually go on to have lives on stages which live beyond the film sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes those um, titles which are slightly more heavy handed in terms of the translation from film to stage don't work. Yeah. And it's actually the more, dare I use the word, but indie films yeah. that actually live longer. Um, we've got some questions. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> some questions. Um, this is from Molly. How does it feel knowing that a film you starred in over 35 years ago, <laughs> nearly almost, 35, almost. sorry, but, um, still has such a huge impact on a massive fan base? I think we kind of covered that. Yeah. But like I said, it is amazing, and I love the fact that you are all sitting here and find something that I was a part of relatable in this day and age because so much has changed and so many movies I watch from the era that I'm like, ah, oh, this movie's great and I have a daughter who's 18 and I'll go, you have to watch this movie and I'll watch it and I'm like, ooh, cringe. Yeah. That movie's awful or like, why, what did I think was great? And so times have changed so much and maybe it's what you said because we weren't playing to the time. Dan kind of wrote in this bubble yeah. of whatever. whatever it's almost ahead of its time. Yeah. Yes. And, and the vernacular and yeah. all the, you know, dialogue. So, um, yeah, that's exciting. Give us um, your favorite memory from the Heather's set. My favorite memory. What was Christian like? Christian. <laughs> 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 that wasn't on the paper. Sorry, that wasn't a very good um, question. So this is always a conflicting answer for me because Christian, I think he was channeling JD and he was very um, much the loner. He very much stayed oh, in his really? trailer. He very Method much. Method acting. Very much had to get a call at home because he was due on the set and was still sleeping. Wow. So yes, yeah, so I didn't interact with him because in yeah. the film I didn't interact with him. And I think on some level he was probably channeling that, yeah. that because he had disdain for the Heathers and yeah. way and, and was, you know. So he didn't go out of his way to befriend yeah. us or be friendly to us. Um, and I think you've seen the musical, haven't you? Did you he see did it in, in New York, yeah. yes. And since then, about probably eight to ten years after he made the film, I ran into him and he kind of apologized. Oh, really? But not like, oh, I'm so sorry. He's just like, oh, hey, and he was yeah. just kind of normal. So. Yeah, and also this was, I don't want to keep going on about it, but 35 years ago, <laughs> <laughs> I have to apologize for things I did last week, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, here we go. What was your reaction? We've asked that one. What's your favorite line that Heather Mack says? Ooh, my favorite line. So many good lines in this movie. So I, I always feel like I don't know that Heather Mack had the best, most memorable line. So I think of it more when I when I think about and each time I watched the movie last night, so I want to jog my memory. <laughs> my favorite, yeah, I know. <laughs> Thirty-five years is a long time. Um, so my favorite, I, I start with my favorite scene, and I love this scene where. I'm not the same me. Uh, Heather Magner, as me, is in the bathroom, really kind of just ready to say, I, life isn't what I thought it was going to be. So that whole scene always makes me feel um, kind of sad, and, and I get really, when I see it on stage, I get quite emotional. Mm -hmm. And it's not kind of funny, because I think of a lot of lines being funny, but it's not, it is funny in a very twisted way that, um, you know, Winona comes in and pushes me, and I'm like, well, you know, what are you trying to do? Kill me? <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm like, obviously yeah. killing yeah. myself. And, and then suicide is a private thing. Yeah. You know, just those the, the, the lines are so kind of they, they are funny in some yeah, way, but then they're also quite um, yeah. sad moving. And, and moving. Uh, With yeah. that in mind, <laughs> do you think, in terms of the musicalization of Heather McNamara, do you think Lifeboat is an appropriate song? And the analogies used in that song for Heather Mack. You know, I was thinking a lot when after the first time I saw the, the musical, which I was kind of like, they're making a musical of Heather's. I'm like, I'm well, keep an open mind. Yeah. It's, like, it's such a dark movie, and then 
at that point, there weren't many musicals that was, you know, subversive yeah. in a sense. I'm like, how are they going to do? I'm like, how are they going to do this? Oh, I got to. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the song Lifeboat. What I started realizing each time I see it, it's basically what it does for Heather McNamara and also for the entire play. All of the songs reveal the inner life of the characters that we didn't mm. get in the movie. So those are all, all the songs yeah. are what was going on in their heads. Yeah. And us as actors were thinking, you know, that was me. I'm kind of like, am I pretty enough? Am I smart enough? Do they like me? Yeah. Um, so, uh, imposter syndrome. It's That's a classic it example. Yeah, of course. It's interesting, because she's probably the most insular Heather, isn't she? Yeah. And it's interesting that we have to wait to, for act two, you know. Chandler's really had her moment in Candy Store. Yeah. Duke's had her moment. Uh, which we put in afterwards in Never Shut Up, and then we wait until Act Two to hear from probably the two quietest characters, yeah. which is Martha and Matt. Yeah. Um, and it almost ties a nice neat bow in their journeys. Yep. Um, right, let's have a couple more. Oh, I love this, this is juicy. Um, <laughs> if you could make one change to McNamara in the musical, what would you change? Okay. No one record this. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I there must be something no. that you sit there and go, I mean, oh, I've changed that. Am I changing it from a directorial point of view and separating myself out from the whole thing, or am I just talking about as me having played the character in the movie and what my The latter. Been? You haven't okay. played the character in the so movie. So what I think is, see, I don't know that it's bad or I would change it, but the difference is I know that I played the character. I was... Um, more sympathetic and quieter, and, yeah. and I didn't. I was just always looking like the way yeah. I was like, I'm looking anything at Heather Taylor. Yeah. She's just like, just tell me what to do. Yeah. I want to please you. I want you know, and I felt happy that I was like, Heather Duke yeah. was there. I didn't have to worry about it. And then Veronica was kind of annoying because she yeah. came in and took my second, you know, place right there. You know, I became relegated to second place. So maybe it's what you said in the if I had to, this is like such a bone, a bone to pick. Um, but maybe that, you know, it, to me it's not as obvious that where she stands in the um, hierarchy. Yeah. Um, as clearly, but that was my choice. And yeah. I think anybody can make whatever choice they want. I, I think it still works because we see such a better uh, change of what happens after she tries to kill herself yeah. and, and kind of a, almost an opening of becoming who she really is. If you were to play any other role, in Heather's the musical for one for one performance. <laughs> who would it be? If I were to play, wow! Oh my God! The sound doesn't sing. We already have this conversation. So this is, yeah, so this is really problematic. So if I got gifted this incredible, you know, vocal uh, <laughs> vocal gift <laughs> by the wish from the genie, um, oh, see, but I can't. I can't. The only character that I could play as me now would be obviously. Pauline Fleming. Well, could you <laughs> sing it for us now? No! <laughs> <laughs> what have I started? What have I started? What does that mean? Only if you sing first. No, no, no yeah. one needs to hear that. No one needs to hear that. Um, okay, let's have one more. Um, you've already answered that. Yeah, you, you've already answered. Let's have one from the audience. Let's have one from you. Straight up, is it a really brilliant question? I can't wait. At the top of your voice, babe. and nice and then it's also kind of frailty and 
um, deceit as well. If you mm. look up what the yeah. yellow means, or when I did the character, yeah. I looked at it. Andy <laughs> does it. So, to start of every rehearsal process, Andy Figman, our director, will talk to the cast about the importance of color in the show yeah. and why Martha is purple and yeah. why JD is black. And there is meaning yes. in color, and that yeah. is the hierarchy of the color. And yeah. in green, green obviously green with envy. Yeah. Heather Duke is green with envy, but then took the power. You know, it's the power of the scrunchie as well. Yeah. Like a big <laughs> Symbol and the course. movie is like where it goes. I think we have. Did we have one more question here? Go on, darling. Yeah. What do you find is the best way to stay in character? Hmm. What do you find is the best way to stay in character? So. Do what Christian Slater did, which is just to go home and not talk. To <laughs> Depends. Um, I personally, I um, I use music a lot, so I I kind of always. Uh, we'll be doing this. Spotify in the day, sorry. <laughs> so, so much has changed. What did you have? Uh, <laughs> Sony Walkman. <laughs> I had one. Uh, yeah, that was cool. Um, so I, put, I would always put, have certain music that would kind of, um, I would sit before I was doing something to get uh, me in a mood. Um, and then basically, do I do all my work before and then I just try to be there with the other person and see hopefully something interesting happens. Yeah. I love it, I love it. Yeah. It's, it's so, do you think you'd ever go on stage? Maybe not in Heather's and Musical, that's not an exclusive we're about to review now. <laughs> but would you, <laughs> it's coming, it's coming. Um, would you go to stage? I would love to do theater and I, didn't in the past because I was super intimidated. Mm. But now that I have matured and, and 30 plus years have passed, <laughs> I feel like I would thrive on the excitement of a live experience yeah. and feeding off of an audience, which when I was younger, I was just way too insecure and terrified. Wow. Well, I will be there on the front row to support you, <laughs> being your cheerleader, <laughs> as you've been our biggest cheerleader. Um, we are so grateful to have you and to have you as part of our family. Uh, for coming and supporting the show and for being here. And I know how much it means to all of these people um, to learn a bit more about you know, the, the origin of this musical. And you are one of the reasons we are here, so thank you. Aww, Please thank put you. your hands up.